with three weeks being left in the season, the draft positions are starting to become more and more concrete. But also, the holes on this team are becoming more evident and more obvious. So, David, I'll start with you. I'd like to know, what are your draft position needs? And if you could do them in order, that'd be great. In terms of needs, because need is a uh, can be subjective, even like something Jalen Johnson not re-signing or us not franchise tagging him. But as of right now, in terms of the weakest talent areas on the team, um, you have to go with a veteran interior lineman, and you have to get a young guy too, because right now that neither guy is on this team, so you have to go and get something there. However, centers and guards notoriously are incredibly attainable like rounds three and later and usually the first and second round guys don't necessarily work out i think even some somebody like uh, uh mike john michael schmitz getting drafted in like the second last year he started off really well and then he got hurt so it's just kind of like a value position uh in terms of early investment you still need an opposite defensive end um really really badly to help fix the team and then you need 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 interior pass rush like not just occasional ones but consistent one um i think that list is getting shorter and shorter which is a great thing because the only place you're drafting is to upgrade a position that's already moderately okay uh because like something like left tackle i think is pretty high up there and that comes from a guy who loves braxton jones i love braxton jones could he be replaced with somebody better for sure and will that make your team a lot better yes but um i think in the trenches is where I usually tend to believe in drafting early. Basically, linemen, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and probably a corner are the top three positions of need. Center, guard, guard, uh, defensive tackle, edge. So, um, and I, you know, I just, I just kind of threw that on a on a piece of paper when I first saw that because it's it's what I thought of just because of this game. I'll say. It, it all starts in the interior and pulls knows that he's, he was an offensive lineman, you know? So I, I, I look at that. The only problem I have with what, with that issue is he's drafting these guys is, am I going to get a center? That's, that's going to be more effective than what I have right now. Cause what I have right now is not very good between Patrick and Whitehair. I, I, I think it's three, almost I, impossible to downgrade. You're right, right. We and we can't have that. I mean, it's it's mind blowing that it hasn't been like addressed mid season even. So yeah. like that's kind of one of those like in the middle of the season, you know, accountability. One of the things that we talked about is, is like a lot of these moves that they chose to stick to. It takes them a little bit too long to move off of. Yeah. So I just uh, I quickly wanted to just share some of my thoughts on Chase Claypool. Now, uh, listen, I want Chase Claypool to have a good season. I want him to have a career season if he can. Uh, I want the best for the Bears and for this offense. I just, I have a really rough time seeing it happen and, and how it's going to happen. Right, Claypool being like the obvious one. Um, I think the white hair situation and then the Lucas Patrick thing is, is more a move of pride almost. Like you put all this energy and effort into like these veteran dudes who you got from another team and have been here on this team. Like white hair is probably a cut. I think if you get another veteran, Patrick's almost certainly a cut. He's in the last deal. So, like, the two starting guard-center combination for almost every single game this entire season are going to be cuts. Not even trades, but probably cuts in this offseason. But I yeah, think that's one you... of the most critical areas that we need to address. And we do need to address it in the draft. But I don't I don't see these guys being ready next year. we got to make some veteran moves. We, we, we've got to bring in some some veteran help. Nate Davis wasn't wasn't the answer, but we also you know we need another wide receiver because who's our number two? We don't really have one. Period. I'll I'll leave it at that. That needs to be addressed. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with you guys as well. Like interior is huge. I think my top need is defensive tackle. I do feel that left tackle can be an upgrade too. However, I don't know if that makes my top needs. I think center and guard kind of trumps the left tackle for me. And, you know, I do think wide receiver is a position of need as well, but so is defensive end. And so if we're talking about the top of the draft, defensive end, defensive tackle, those are the premier positions you need to draft in the first round based off historical statistics and guys that work out in this league and guys that don't. Whereas positions like wide receiver, 
I mean, third round Cooper Cup, fifth round Antonio Brown, fifth round Tyree Hill, second round Devontae Adams. We've seen some of the best wide receivers in this league go outside of the first round. I mean, there's way more examples. There's examples of first round wide receivers, too, that are great. Justin Jefferson being one of them. You know, I think it was pick 22, pick 23 or something like that, or maybe a little higher. But um, more often than not, you can find guards, you can find centers a little bit later. And things like that. Defensive tackles, defensive ends. No, those guys, the ones that are good in this league, those guys are taken pretty higher in the first round. But the, I think the most interesting part of this conversation, I set this up and I was asking you guys this, is because all three of us, none of us said quarterback. However, the talk is, do you take the quarterback at number one? And, and currently, right now, that doesn't even make our list of needs I've been very clear on how I feel about taking a quarterback early. Um, it almost never works out. And even when they're not the first overall pick, any guy that's taken, you know, first in the draft, even like recent memories, Kenny Pickett in a weak class, you know, it got, it does kind of differentiate itself as like an, a, an incredibly risky thing to do. And um, again, if you're talking about value, you're talking about what you can get out of the draft. Like, yeah, for sure. We've, st we've gone through this, Paul, and just looked at every decent to above average defensive tackle in the last 10 to 20 years, defensive end. You got to take these guys early. You got to take them off. And then every other position, even at this point, you could argue that the quarterback position, there's almost never the first or second guy taken that's good in the NFL right now. So you have Patrick Mahomes, who was the third guy that draft even, and that's the, the best guy in the league. And uh, Josh Allen was, I think, 17th or 13th pick to Buffalo. Uh, Jalen Hurts was a second, late second round pick, you know, Brock Purdy's number one in every category and he was Mr. Irrelevant. So I think in terms of your value position and where you, who you take and where you take them, I think that hopefully is something that Ryan Poles is not letting the emotion of the situation break his brain from deviating from, because he's been consistent about that. He is an offensive lineman. He knows what offensive linemen are, are, and then he knows what defensive linemen are probably second best because he's played against them. So hopefully this um, this emotional field situation isn't going to you know mess with his head and t make him do the the typical thing. When I think right now probably the best way to build your team is to be a little bit atypical and just make it deeper and stronger in the trenches. 